Hello everybody, it's Elena with Let's Talk. And here we are with my friend, Mark Olinsky. So many people go for, uh, for doctors, for psychologists, to talk about some problems. My opinion is different. I'm from Ukraine, <laughs> uh, with mentality of USSR, and we used to not to have doctors, psychiatrists. So what we did, we just go to see your friend, and we discuss problems, happiness, you know, we share some stuff. And over five minutes, instantly, you have turned <laughs> off your mood from down to happiness. I'm glad that by living in America for 12 years, I kept that ability. And I still believe that the best therapy is your best friend. So, you are my best friend. And well, thank I you. you. <laughs> and I know you for 12 years or something. Oh, wow. And I love you as a man. And thank you are you. a great person with integrity and with a lot of knowledge. And I trust you. Thank you. That's why I would love to talk with Mark today. And this is not about uh, promoting something or offer for you guys something. Because it's just for you example how people can resolve situation on their own. For example, like we do. Right. So we love to talk about so many stuff. So, and uh, when, I, when I saw you, when you walked in, I noticed you were a little bit down. So what it was? Oh, I don't know. I think I just, um, there's so many things I want to get done. And uh, I'm not always getting to them. So, I, you know, I like to accomplish things. And so I get very frustrated. Not very frustrated. It's frustrated enough that um, what's on my mind, I'm not doing it all at once. Does that make sense? So you, you're worried about uh, that you cannot accomplish in the short time too many things? There's a lot of things to accomplish. And instead of picking one at a time, they're all in my head at once. And so that's what was going on this morning. Oh, I'm glad you, you can accomplish everything. For example, thank you for, <laughs> for accomplishing at least today interview. We made it today. Yes, we made it today, <laughs> finally. Actually, we've been meeting like this many times mm -hmm. and we had very beautiful and very interesting conversations. So, and I do this frequently with my friends. So somebody told me many times, Selena, you should tape it and everybody would love to listen to what you're talking about. So that's why we're doing that, guys. And we're talking about things what interest in us. But if you will be interested, I will be happy if you will go on website, uh, elenabermangroup.com, and you will ask questions, what you want to know, and do some feedback about our conversations. OK, yes. anyway. Uh, scientists are full with facts and people full of opinions about my Very way. True. <laughs> yeah, but my way, I don't care about all of those. All right. I just like a person who I love to talk to, who I trust, mm -hmm. and I'm ask personal questions. Okay. My question is because I know you can answer. Do you remember we started to go on those events in Hollywood? And oh yeah, that red carpet. Do you remember? Absolutely. And what do you think? What do you notice? Um, relationship when you establish right away there mm -hmm. between man and a woman does right. it help you? Um, you know to grow. I mean, uh, everybody go network there. It's it's different for me because I come from a medical background. So a lot of things before social engagement before. Um, had a lot to do with doctors and more scientific and overall extremely boring. And so a lot of the red carpets, uh, you know, you know how strongly I believe in marketing and public relations and networking is part of that. Um, so I enjoy the social interaction of just getting out and going to these particular events. Um, again, coming from a different background, um, I accomplished so much early in my life, and now I'm in a different career. So I, I look at this differently. I, I see 
a lot of people positioning themselves to be on the red carpet that really are doing it more for, I don't know what they're doing it for. I think it's more for fun for themselves or something like that. For sure. But they're not necessarily in the movie industry or they never really will be. They just want the attention. They want the photographs. At the same point in time, I don't blame them because they're out having a good time with their friends. Mm -hmm. But again, coming from my different background in, in medicine, the red carpet to me was always a more prestigious thing that had to do almost like the gala before the gala, where the celebrities or the VIPs would come out and, um, well, they'd have, it, it was their, mar their type of marketing but they had something that they were promoting. They had a movie, so you, or they had their reputation being promoted or some type of a project. And I don't want to be mean about it, but I think a lot of it's turned in more to a lower level circus. Mm -hmm. And I, again, I don't hold it against the people per se, because they're out having a good time. But I think that, uh, again, from my viewpoint, maybe a little bit more traditional, it's taking away from the glamour and the significance of what the red carpet was there or meant to me in the first place. Uh, it's a very interesting point. Uh, my opinion as well, um, similar to yours, but what I noticed, it's like, you know, like rehearsal. Some people doing like rehearsal, how they would do on the bigger gala. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I actually agree with that. I can see that even for myself, again, with coming from a different background, I was not used to all this. And so as I started getting more and more invited to the red carpets, it's exactly what I saw it as. It's a rehearsal and an understanding so that when you, let's say, get to the big times or the bigger times, you don't make a fool of yourself. You're at least practiced. Yeah, it's a great idea. <laughs> so, you know, uh, that's why uh, actually well-known Hollywood about practicing mm -hmm. and go for it and don't think about it. it. It's no different than, I forget what it's called, but where, you, where women would go and learn how to hold a teacup or make a setting or be proper in balls or people would learn to dance behind the scenes so that when they went to the, the proper social event, etiquette, they had an etiquette course first. Yeah. So the manners were already there. Because you can, you can see a lot of people that uh, are newer to the red carpet there they're not experienced yeah, in it, but it at the right same away. point in time, I also see some, you know, the people with the clowns, with the peace signs and the gang signs, and I'm going, Where well, maybe, yeah, 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 it's not necessarily my style, but it's theirs. They're having a good time. Don't but, you think it would be nice because um, it would be nice if somebody would have some educational program, or at least, I don't know, they will have a video how you have to be I on think, the carpet. I think that uh, that is, it's a great idea. Maybe we should do it, mm -hmm. all right? Maybe we should do that. But I also think it's the job in Hollywood, there's a thing called the publicist that gets their clients out there. It's not the job of the agent. They're Maybe expensive. it's the job of the manager, but I think it's truly the job of the publicist to prepare the public or their public, their client, how to properly behave on the red carpet, how to position themselves, how to get proper pictures, and then even after that, how to use it so that it just doesn't become common. I think, uh, especially even with things like Facebook, things are getting, you get on the red carpet, your picture's all over Facebook, and it's becoming too common. Yeah. That's it's just me. It's losing, it's, right. it, yeah, it's losing the significance, Labor. like I said, yeah. So even myself, I try to pick and choose the events that I go to. I don't go to as many events that I did in the past. Um, but it can be a very good practicing ground for the bigger and better stuff. So it looks like you started, and I have a feeling about that, that you started to go on the red carpets to go away from your previous life. And it's like a transition. Uh, you're trying in order to uplift mm -hmm. yourself, to feel better, and then you will figure it out what to do next. Well, was I know you're yeah. multi-talented. Yeah. Thank you. You're it's doing a... great pictures, and you're an actor, you're a producer, mm -hmm. you're a marketer. It's unbelievable. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do when I grow up. The, the but in the meantime, I'll have a good time. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think it wasn't something that I did so much to get away from what I used to do. That came as a decision that I just didn't want to do medicine anymore. 
although it's very interesting, I'm going to get my lifetime membership in the Academy of, Academy of Ambulatory Foot Surgery, foot and ankle surgeons, and uh, I just talked to them again. I don't, I don't use it. I'm not licensed anymore, but I'm going to go back on the le lecture circuit, I, and I just came up with a, a couple of weeks ago. I think I may actually go back to China and teach again. I think you because, should. Because um, I don't need an American license to teach there. I need to be invited. So the skills haven't gone. I haven't forgotten. So I, I might do it for fun, start traveling the world again, teaching foot surgery and uh, lecturing a little bit, both on uh, marketing for practices, uh, how, you know, change of life would be how you, when you leave the practice, as well as the things that I've seen on the outside now yeah. that I think medicine should still go forward. But it's just more or less like we're having now. It's going to be enjoyable conversation with a different group of people from yeah. time to time, but still uh, doing the producing and acting and the photography is taking off. It's what I, that's what I'll dedicate most of my life to now. Nice. Let me ask you another question. You've been through divorce. What made you stood up and don't lose yourself, don't go cuckoo or depressed? <laughs> or maybe you did. So could you tell no, me I did. about that? A lot of people may say I've gone cuckoo or started out that way in the first place. But I was never really depressed about it. Um, I've always seen life as to what you can create for the future. So I never put any regrets to the past. It's Maybe it's just something I learned as, you know, even as a child where you see aunts and uncles or people die, you realize there's somebody that you loved that was a big part of your life, but it isn't there anymore. So for lack of a better thing, you, you carry on with the memories or whatever they taught with you, but you don't get stuck in the past. You appreciate them yeah, and you, 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 you appreciate or at least, and hopefully understand, or you would, if you didn't understand, you couldn't appreciate. I think understanding comes first what they contributed to your life and that you carry with you and you show respect to the past with a creation for the future so uh, it's that's just how I, I do things no matter what it is people come and go and pets come and go out of your life you can't sit there and in my opinion and be depressed about it you're putting too much emphasis on somebody that's not you you can lose yourself, and that's where the confusion and the cuckoo comes, or you find yourself, oh my God, all of a sudden I've got to do, the, you know, I've got to get a tire for my car if you're a woman, or if you're a man, I've got to cook or make the beds, whatever the traditional roles were for you in that relationship. And it's nothing to get crazy about in my mind. It's just, that's what you've got to do. You know, I used to live in Chicago, and if it snowed, I had a shovel. End of story. <laughs> I didn't right. get miserable oh, that it snowed. Ass, right? <laughs> you know, I sent her out to do the shoveling. And that's actually something I've always, even as a kid, because I grew up in upstate New York in a snow belt, and uh, getting out there with a shovel, I always liked physical exercise, and especially at night when it was very, very quiet. So I, I just like being out there alone in the quiet night. And so for whatever reason, I, I, I in Chicago, I had a driveway that was 100 feet long, and yeah, I could have gotten a plow to do it, but it was almost like my therapy to just get out at night and just say, let's do yeah. this driveway. Uh, it hurt the next day, but it was that's fine. Right. You know, Barrymore said, you know, grandfather, yeah. Barrymore, he said, if you want to, if you have argument with your wife or mm -hmm. his husband, take the hat and go for a walk. So, taking for a, great exercise the, one, of the, one of the best therapies in life is go take a walk. Yes. It's one of the, and what people don't realize, they're, as they take a walk, all of a sudden their problems are going to be building up, building up, building up, and then they're going to go, why am I on the stupid walk? That's the point you have to continue to walk. Yes. Because that's the, right? that's, that's the tilting point between your past that's come up to you while you're walking and your future where the past just disappears because the therapy then starts you to just work. You the board line. Yeah, you got you to go past whatever was bothering you on that walk. Yeah, this is a great analogy. Yeah. So what do you do to feel better? to feel good? I do a lot of walking. I do do a lot of walking, and whether it's to go get coffee or I live in Marina del Rey, so I'll go for a walk on the pier or walk on the beach. But I tend to um, what I call exteriorize. People get depressed when they look internal too much or they try to solve things too much. I think that's 
and not to insult anybody, but it's my personal opinion, that's the problem with meditation. You sit there and internalize. What I do is externalize. I will look off into the distance. I will look for things that are interesting. I will look for things that are, are fascinating. And I get out of my mind, if you will, out of my body type of thing, to look at things outside my problems. So you switch your attention. I switch my attention off my problems to life mm -hmm. itself. And typically things that are in far distances because too many times, especially now, people got their cell phones like this, yeah. they got the computer like this, and their whole life is within a couple of inches of their face. And so it's important when you go for the walk to take a far distant viewpoint. It's also good for the eyes. For sure, for sure. So th that's what I do. And, and then I also like to swim. Can't always swim, but for whatever reason, when I'm in the water or underwater or, again, where I'm just with myself, and just whether I'm counting strokes or counting laps, all these other problems don't come in. And then there's one other thing for the audience, and I've given advice. There's only really two questions in life, and the rest is all a detraction. And what that is is, what do I want, and how can I get it? If you focus and you have a goal of what you want, I don't care what it is, it could say, well, I want to go for a sandwich, or I want a new home, new car, more money. You ask yourself, what do I want? And then you ask yourself, how can I get it? That puts your mind towards solutions to your goals, as opposed to problems as to why you're not reaching them. Great. Now I know your recipe, thank you. That's a simple one. <laughs> oh yes. You know, everybody has own recipe and it's, it's not a final recipe for everyone. You just have to shop around, right? Like you go in the store mm -hmm. and try on something and you don't like, you just put it back. Right, it's a little taste of life. And so, either you decide that's good for you or it's not good for you. You don't dwell on it and you don't... I also have a habit that if, if people don't make me feel good, I politely leave them alone. Great, I do the same. <laughs> I just, no, politely, no, no, politely. no hard feelings. <laughs> That's right. It's, just, it's like, yeah, I don't, get, I don't let them get upset or their, um, their negativity or their confusion run into my life. Great. I love our conversation. And I think we can interrupt ourselves okay. right here. And uh, if you like what you heard, or you have any suggestions, please go on alienabermangroup.com and leave your feedback on any questions for the mark as well. And I will see you next time. Thank you. Yeah, it was different. All right. Yeah. and uh, It's your show. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I just don't know what's going to no, come out of me until yeah. you ask yeah, the yeah, question. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So. Um, this could be behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. It's a whole yeah. separate CD set. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Excuse me. Whether you're using moisturizing creams or you're cleaning your fingernails or you're getting plastic surgery, you're feeling better. But if you think that something physical is going to totally yeah. fix the mental. You may look at yourself for a while, but sooner or later the body is going to get a little bit older and there's only so much you can do. And <clears throat> what you need to do is you need to have that mind in your spirit. That's got to be balanced along the way. You have to be doing these things, I think, primarily for yourself, not necessarily for your need to fit into society of some look or some impression. And you have to be part of it. That's, as I say, Madison Avenue. That's marketing, you know. Yes. That, that's, people don't realize, and this is um, what I realized when I got here as a doctor, there's a lot of reality. you just got to deal with science. Either it works or it doesn't work. Either it's optimum or it's not optimum. Out here, people are tending to believe what Hollywood or Madison Avenue says you should look like what age you should be, the type of clothing you should wear, what your hairstyle should be. And you're seeing it all the time, even in, in uh, names are being changed depending on who's the popular uh, 
yeah. person of the time. They name their kid after that, yes. and, and they don't realize that the kid now has to live in a lifestyle 40, 50 years later that has nothing to do with right now. That's right. That my prior priorities were more towards family, because I have five children, I'm going, I really can't lose a balanced perspective. I can't take off into this fantasy world called Hollywood Sure. and uh, lose what I would consider my core values. So I never want that to happen. And I think you find that more and more with a lot of Hollywood people where they do what they have to do because that's their profession. Then the first opportunity they get, they move to Idaho. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I just got to get back. Right? Yeah, I got I to gotta ride a horse. I got to look that's at right. the sunset. The thing about games is you got to make sure you're playing your own. Yes. Because you're never going to win at somebody else's. Yeah. And Hollywood is a made-up game from a long time ago that people follow because those are the rules of the game as opposed to just saying, okay, as I said before, what do I want and how do I get it? Focusing on your own game, focusing on your own goals. Or in other it, words, you play in the rules, but make sure that you, you can, win. You know what the rules are, but you, I have also learned even as a kid and things like that, and I, I think that's what's helped me accomplish so much. You want to understand the rules of the game so that you know how to break them to win. Yeah. That's okay. okay? And, uh, but you're breaking them because it's your life. That's right, and you want you understand? to understand. And, and most very successful people really don't fit in, and I learned that a long time ago. The moment I tried to fit in or tried to play the game the way somebody else played it, I would lose. And I would lose myself in that process. You got to go back to the basics, which is really, as we talked about, mind, body, and spirit and things like that. You got to go back to your own true nature. And you've got to ask the question, which is a tough question, which has been going on for eons, who am I? When you can answer that, you can take off on your journey. Be no, afraid. don't be afraid to be who you are. You are, that's right. You know, you can like be a, very astonished. It's like uh, Jim Carrey, who I admire a lot because uh, it was one of his movies. He, who, um, he was making faces at this kid, and he says, "You can make a lot of money doing this." <laughs> 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 and yeah. it was just, he was willing to be crazy. He was willing to be the face. And yes. the same thing, you know, you got Jack Nicholson, you, 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 Arnold Schwarzenegger, any of these people that are a little bit eccentric. They at least knew who they were, and they never really tried to fit in. And that's what made them great, basically. How do you feel now, since you came in the house? <laughs> oh, I feel much better. It was very good coffee, and the chocolate she gave me was delicious. <laughs> but <I laughs> it's much more relaxing than driving on the highway. I think we did a good job. Do you? Okay, yeah. well, you're the director and producer. That's right. I'm just a guest.